It is vlog number 150, the sesquicentennial vlog, if you will. And my thanks to those of you who have been with me since we started this thing back in March of 2018. It's been quite a run and uh, almost hard to believe that we're already at 150. This vlog won't be typical, you might say, and I'll explain why coming up in a couple of minutes after we get to a couple of big hands that were played this week at Peppermill. It was a week where I was able to play a lot of poker, but my ability to properly capture video of hands, and to do a lot of things for that matter, was severely limited due to a bad beat in life, which I'll tell you about later. It was a week where local legend Mr. C dragged a $6,500 pot when his aces held up against a combo draw. He'd been in beast mode for quite some time, and it seemed like he remained there all week. But the hands I have to share didn't come against him. The first one comes when I open 25 under the gun 2 and middle position calls. The cutoff raises to 125 and to my surprise the big blind cold calls that bet. I thought about coming back over the top with my ace king here but decided to just call. Middle position calls as well. So with 500 in it comes ace 7 8 two hearts giving me top pair top kicker. Big blind checks. I bet 200 MP calls and the cutoff and big blind fold. So with 900 in, the turn is the seven of clubs. I bet 250. He tanks and finally makes the call. So with 1400 in, the river is the five of hearts. Not the river card I wanted to see, but the question I have to ask here is, should I continue to value bet? You guys know me, generally speaking, the answer is yes. It's a three bet pot, which should steer him towards a lot of big aces as opposed to a lot of low suited connectors. And if he does raise me big on the end, I think this is an opponent that I can safely bet fold against. So I decide to make a very small bet, making it 260. He did not treat it as a small bet though. He treated it as basically as if I'd gone all in because he tanked and tanked and agonized over this call. He then asked me if I had 7-8 and I actually almost answered mid-hand and said, bro, you really think I'm going to be calling 125 pre-flop with 7-8? But I didn't say anything. I was obviously hoping that he had ace-queen and would pay me off here. Though it was concerning that he seemed to be worried about a full house in particular and not too much else. Finally, he decides to call my 18% pot bet. After a lot of deliberation, I turn over the cards and snap this photo. He waits about seven or eight seconds. Probably the longest seven or eight seconds I've had in quite some time. And finally turns over his hand showing 7-9 of spades for a turned trips. There are a number of confusing and frustrating things about this hand, to say the least. But then a hand takes place where under the gun opens 15, and I call plus two with pocket fours. Button calls as well as the big blind, so we have 60 in, and get a slightly above average flop for me. Queen, queen, four. Gets checked to the button who fires 35 and the big blind folds, but under the gun makes the call. I opt to check raise right now, making it 110. The button calls, and then under the gun jams all in for about 700. After I snap call, the button folds his hand, giving us about a $1,600 pot. He asks what my kicker is, indicating that his wasn't an ace. It also was not a king. As one hit on the turn, I show my hand, and he never shows his as we take that one down on what was 
the highlight of the week. A week that featured a lot of poker for a reason that I'm not too happy about. So, one very fortunate hand for me, that hand with the pocket fours actually reminded me of maybe the most important hand of my career, which if you go back in the vlog archive to the COVID lockdown time period I talked about when I flopped uh, fours full on queen, queen, four. And that was the hand where I honestly felt that if I hadn't flopped that full house and doubled up, I might have quit playing poker because I had just been running so bad. I had lost so much in the lead up to it. But that was almost the most critical hand, even though it wasn't the biggest pot, certainly, that I'd played or have played since by a long shot, but it was maybe the most critical. So uh, I did, I think, the top five most memorable hands uh, that I'd ever played during that COVID lockdown period. I believe Rampage actually uh, emailed me saying that he liked the idea and asked if he could do it too, and I said, sure. Uh, so uh, that uh, kind of reminded me of that. The ace-king hand, I don't even know what to say. It was just another example of how... Ace King just doesn't win big pots. And that's kind of an old school way of thinking about it. My buddy Gary, who's an old school guy, was the first to tell me that. And he's been nothing but proven right uh, for the last several years with that. It, it, it seems like it's just so difficult to get paid off in a big pot with Ace King, even though in this hand, obviously, I thought I was going to do it. Couldn't quite do it. Should have come back over the top before the flop, but didn't, uh, didn't play it that way. And it cost me, as you saw right there. So the question is, why is this week's vlog so short? Why do I not have video in the vlog like I typically do? Well, some of you already know the answer to this. For the first time in 37 years, I have broken a bone. As you can see here, this wrist broken. Not a bad break, they tell me, but it is broken. So I got this cast on and uh, it's rendered my right hand pretty useless. I can still use a mouse, thankfully, which is helpful, but uh, can't do much else with it, can't lift up anything with that hand. Uh, and it's been definitely a struggle. Actually, when it comes to vlogging, the thing that I, it's almost the hardest to do is the trimming of the video on the phone. So hopefully I'll improve that in coming weeks and I can actually get some real video and shoot these things. But uh, that's actually the hardest part is just the capturing of video at the table uh, with this uh, inability to do anything with the right hand. And, you know, uh, this might surprise you. But we actually have video um, of how I broke this hand, and it's because a guy tried to cheat me in a poker game, and you'll see what I did to him. So after that happened, uh, you know, I thought I could just get out of there, right? But as you see, uh, that didn't quite go that way. Makes me curious to see you in this neighborhood. So that was rough, as you see there. That was that was real rough. But you know, we'll get through it. We'll grind this out, and uh, well, hopefully, just keep on booking wins. Which so far this year, it's pretty much been the case uh, through the first couple of weeks of January. Uh, one thing I'll be doing. Over the next several weeks, heading to CrushSlidePoker.com and watching the training videos there. You can always get 25% off a basic or premium subscription to CLP just by using promo code BENDEACH. There's a link in the description below. Absolutely fired up. NFC title game with my 49ers. Gonna need them to win that. I like their chances, but either way, you'll probably hear me talk more about that on the next vlog. Hit the like and subscribe buttons and follow me on Instagram at Ben Deach and we'll see you back here next time.